You are welcome to another video of Juniper Security Associate course. In this section, I will talk about Juniper SRX destination NAT concept and configuration. Destination NAT allows services with private IP addresses to be published over the internet. In other words, be reachable over the internet. It is also known as pre-routing NAT because destination NAT occurs before routing decision. As I've discussed different types of NAT in the previous sections with destination NAT, it becomes possible to publish services over the internet even though servers have real private IP addresses. With this solution, we can publish many services with just one or a few public IP addresses. For example, in this figure, you can see that the public IP address 12111 is used to publish two servers with private IP addresses over the internet. When users connect to the public IP address 12111 and with destination port 22, they will be redirected to the server with IP address 192.168.10.118 and with the same port. However, when users connect to the same public IP address, but with destination port 2323, then they are redirected to the server with private IP address 10.121 and port 23. As you can see, especially in the second example, destination NAT can be used also as a port forwarding solution. Since the port 2323 is translated to 23. It can be used to hide the real port that the server is listening on. If you remember, this is the Juniper SRX flow diagram that we discussed in the second lesson of this course called Juniper SRX traffic flow. It shows that destination NAT occurs before routing decision. This is because routing is based on destination IP address and destination IP address is changed in destination NAT. Therefore, first destination NAT changes the destination IP address of the packet and then routing decides on which outgoing interface the packet should be forwarded. It also means that at the time of destination NAT processing, the router does not know the packet's outgoing interface and zone. Therefore, unlike source NAT policies that are configured between two specific interfaces or zones, in destination NAT, only incoming interface or zone must be configured. This is the topology that we'll use to configure destination NAT, and this is the same topology that we used in the previous section. As you can see in the topology, users inside the network with IP at the subnet 192.168.10.sh24 are connected to the internet through two interventing devices. The first device, Juniper SRX, translates the IP address of users inside the network to the IP address in the subnet 192.168.1 SH24. It was implemented using source NAT and in the previous section. The second device, WAN router, which is not under my control, translates the IP address in the subnet 192.168.1 to a specific public IP address. What we will implement in this section is to publish servers in the inside zone with the IP address 192, 168, 10, 118, and 121 to be available with IP address subnet 192.168.1 in the outside zone. When clients connect to the Outside IP 1118 with the port 22, then they will be redirected to the IP address 10118 in the inside zone and with the same port 22. Also, when clients connect to the outside IP 1121 and port 
port 2323 then they will be redirected to the IP address 10.121 and port 23 in the inside zone only one public IP address was enough to redirect users to the both servers just for the sake of simplicity I used two public or two outside IP addresses so that the last octet of the outside IP address and inside IP address are the same before I start the destination NAT configuration I will permit everything from the outside to the inside zone so that we don't get involved in the concept and configuration of security policies as we have learned how to configure security policies in the previous sections this is the configuration to permit everything from outside zone to the inside zone source any destination application any and then permit there is just one another important point to note here if you remember and also what we discussed a few minutes ago uh, security policies occurs in traffic flow after both destination NAT and routing decision therefore in security policies we use actual IP address of internal servers as the destination IP address and not the IP address seen from the outside in our example destination IP address 192.168.10.24 is used in the security policy and not the IP address visible from the outside. Now we can copy and commit the configuration and then commit. And now this is the configuration of destination NAT. The first four lines are the pool of internal servers which will be published in the outside zone the first two lines create a pool with the name of ssh include ip address 192.168.10.118 with the port 22 pointing to the ssh server the port number is optional and it is configured when it is required the second two lines create another pool with the name of telnet containing the IP address of 10.121 with port 23 which pointing to the telnet server. Configuring pool for the internal IP addresses publishing the destination NAT is always required. Then we configure a rule set with the name of DNAT which match with the traffic coming from the outside zone. Unlike source NAT rule set which we configure between two zones or interfaces, in the destination NAT we only configure incoming zone or incoming interface. This is because destination NAT occurs before routing in the traffic flow and at the time of destination NAT processing, outgoing interface is not a steel determine then we configure two rules with the name of ssh and telnet rule ssh match traffic with destination address 1 118 and destination port 22 it translates the destination ip address and port to what is configured in the pool ssh which is 10 118 and port 20 rule telnet matches traffic with destination 1 121 and destination port 2323 it translates destination ip address and port to what is configured in telnet pool which is 10 121 and port 23 and finally proxy arp must be enabled for the ip addresses 1 118 and 1 121 since by default juniper srx does not respond to the arp request for these ip addresses and traffic 
to these IP addresses without proxy up never reach to the Juniper SRX. Now we can copy and commit the configuration and then commit to monitor and troubleshoot destination NAT we first try to connect to the servers through their outside IP address and ports first we create a SSH connection to the IP address 1 118 and port 22 which is default port of the SSH Also, we create another Telnet connection to the IP address 192.168.1.121 and Telnet to port 23.23 open. As we can see, Telnet connection is also established. Then we monitor session table with command run show security flow session and with port slash 22 and once slash 23 as you can see in the outside of both connection destination ip address of the incoming connection is the outside ip address in the subnet one but the source address of reverse outgoing connection is real inside ip address in the subnet 10. This is true for both connection 1, 23, 23, and the source address of reverse outgoing connection is 10, 121, 23. We can also monitor the live output of log with monitor start command, monitor start firewall, and then grep, for example, port 23. And then we try to create another connection 192, 168, 1, 121, and then telnet 23, 23, and open. As you can see, destination IP address is the outside IP address with port 23, 23, but it is translated to the inside real IP address on port 23. It also shows that it's matched with the rule telnet in destination NAT and with the rule permit all in security policy rule and then with a stop monitor and then with command show security NAT destination NAT rule all you can see the details of the configuration for example, destination address and destination port, destination address, destination port, the outside and the inside for translated IP address and port. It also shows translation hits and successful sessions. Translation hits and successful sessions.